So guys, my name is Alan Gilday, welcome to $50 Film School. It just occurred to me that in a couple of the previous uh, videos when I was posting them, uh, they both said my worst experience uh, working with a director and my worst experience going for an audition. So I thought, you know, $50 Film School isn't all about work bad experiences, really uh, quite a positive vibe to the channel. And uh, so it's time for me to tell you um, three of the most positive experiences that I've had within uh, my career working as an actor. So, first and foremost, I'm going to tell you about uh, my experiences uh, working with Paul Greengrass and what I learned from him in terms of uh, being an actor, but also what I learned from him in, in terms of watching him direct. So I hope that I can pass on something to you that will be uh, of encouragement to you in your creativity and your career. Secondly, I also had the pleasure of working, well, I couldn't say I worked with, but I was, I was directed by Lord Attenborough albeit momentarily, but how many actors can say that? It was a real privilege, so in the next video I'm going to tell you a little bit about that. And then finally, I'll tell you a little bit about working on uh, Good Vibrations, uh, Mark Kermode's Film of the Year, um, and I uh, had a couple of scenes in that movie which I'll tell you about in the subsequent video to that. So very, very quickly then, working with Paul Greengrass. Paul Greengrass, as you may know, um, directed Bloody Sunday, um, the Bourne Ultimatum, the Bourne Con Supremacy, the Bourne Supremacy and the Bourne Ultimatum, United 93 and Captain Phillips. And uh, Paul came from a background in working in uh, world and action documentaries. Um, a tremendously intelligent man, uh, full of energy and passion for his subject. I worked uh, on Bloody Sunday uh, for three weeks. And that was an extraordinary experience because essentially I'm a, a middle class, fairly soft kid from um, Bangor in Northern Ireland which is a very middle class sheltered uh, area given the context of the uh, civil unrest and troubles in Northern Ireland um, and uh, there I was going to set with people who had actually been um, involved in the Republican armed struggle and involved in some cases um, you know with actual conflict uh, be it members of the SAS or members of the provisional IRA or people who had been um, civil civil rights activists at the time so it really was an eye-opener and Paul's knowledge of the uh, political uh, complexities of the situation was absolutely jaw-dropping to me and extremely humbling he had worked with uh, I think a guy called Don, Don Mullen for five years uh, sorry Don Mullen had worked on, on the project for five years researching um, the, the, the context and the, the material for the film. So this isn't to get into the politics of that particular film. What struck me about watching Paul Greengrass was his extreme generosity. Um, what do I mean by that? The very night that we were to, the night before filming was due to start, we were called up by Paul to Jimmy Nesbitt's room in um, the hotel that we were staying. Jimmy Nesbitt starred in the film, James Nesbitt. And uh, Paul sat us down and put on a, a clip from a film that he had made, directed previously, a film called The Murder of Stephen Lawrence, which was absolutely outstanding. Now, myself and a couple of friends looked at each other and just sort of turned to Paul and kind of said, look, we, we're freaked out here because there's no way that we can deliver the kind of work that you clearly expect based on the performances in that particular film. And Paul just says, oh, no, no, don't worry about it. He says, uh, you'll be fine. Uh, I asked him, well, look, you know, how, how do you see things starting tomorrow? So Paul says to me, well, Alan, um, your character organised the march. So uh, tomorrow morning, uh, we're going to go up to Free Dairy. There's going to be like three or 4,000 people there, many of whom had actually been there on that terrible day. Um, he says... The day's going to start by you getting up and organising the march in character. So you can imagine how well I slept that night. You know, this is the first proper, you know, professional, not the first professional gig, but, you know, first real break, uh, a film of real quality to be working on. And it was up to me to set the tone for the very first shot and to organise that march. And there was, there was one point actually where, um, I had to stay in character for the whole thing. It was shot in multiple takes, uh, multiple long progressive takes. So there was no shot, reverse shot, scene, you know, shooting a master and then coming in for angles. It was shot as a documentary. The march was reenacted and the whole thing was just shot by concealed cameras uh, when we were on radio mics. So we never knew when the camera was on us or off. At one point, there was a problem with some of the um, 
stewarding, and we were on a we were mounted on a on a, a lorry, and uh, I was with a megaphone, sort of shepherding people through the uh, through the march route, and uh, some of the stewards weren't weren't seeming to be doing their job properly. So in character, I jumped down off the uh, off the lorry, ran up, and gave some of these fellas a bit of a shouting and saying, "Look, you know, you've got to keep." got to keep these people back there's a lot of people coming through here it's really important that nobody gets hurt you know this is an orderly procession yada 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 some of them looked at me with real you know who's this cheeky blart sort of expression on their face it turned out when we got to the end of it one of one of the fellas after action was cut one of the fellas came over to me says uh says listen mate see back there when you were shouting at us you were acting weren't you i says yes of course man of course you know i, I was uh in character all that kind of stuff and he laughed and gave me a big hug and he says oh that's all right we thought you were being a cheeky shit and uh, I, I says no no not at all he says i offered to uh, he offered me to come out for a drink with him and the other lads afterwards i thought well there you go a little misunderstanding very nicely um patched up by them told somebody about it on the way back and he says uh, do you know who those guys were i says no he says well let's just say that they were released from her majesty's uh pleasure under the Good Friday Agreement. Um, so it gives you a sense that, you know, my naivety in being a rather sheltered middle class kid from from Bangor, right up in the middle of where it all went down, one of the big conflict zones in so-called Free Dairy at the time. Um, and the authenticity with which Paul was working with people who had been there and lived that. And people from every historical, political and military or paramilitary persuasion pulled together in that film to try and tell the truth to the best of their ability at the time. And I was really humbled by the experience. Okay, so going back to Paul's generosity, he trusted me to to kick off that film. And at the time I had, you know, very, very little, if any, proper film experience. So there was enormous trust, there was enormous generosity. When somebody of that stature afford you that kind of trust um it's an enormous compliment um and you will do anything you can to reward that trust and to do your very very best for him so i thought i thought that was just wonderful direction there was another another um by virtue of the fact that he gave next to no direction he just he said be in character you know your character organized the march you organize the march you're up for it i know you can do it and that was that was very exhilarating, as you can imagine. And then there was another scene, which is towards the end of the movie, where my character reads out the names of those who were killed in the tragedy, and it's a sort of it's a press conference scene. Now that scene wasn't in the movie. Uh, it was in the movie, but uh, in a in a bridged form. And um, I had sort of said to Paul, "Look, um, wouldn't my character have have read out a list in a, in an event such as this?" And he says, you know what, Alan? Yeah, let's give it a try. Why don't you just run with that and see how it feels? So we shot that scene and it was, ex you know, it turned out to be, as you can imagine, a very, very powerful and moving scene. Um, very effective. Can you imagine the generosity of that man that he would listen to somebody such as myself take on board um, my suggestion and not pull rank in any, I mean, obviously he said, listen, no, that doesn't work or, you know, no, that's, you know, stick to what we've told you or anything like that. But he just, he just saw that there was a merit in the suggestion, let me run with it and included it in, in the film. So he allowed us to collaborate and bring some of our own insight to the, uh, to the project. Now, to me, that's a great director, someone who has that self-confidence um, and, and, lack of ego ironically it's actually a very strong ego because it, it's unthreatened by the um, uh, contributions of other people um, but he was in that security whereby he could let other people contribute out of their strengths and their insights rather than having to impose his own sort of dominant view on everybody else and I've seen that happen particularly at film school and I've done it myself so uh, you know what I, what I wanted to pass on to you in this epic series of name dropping was just my own resolution after working with Paul in terms of directing was to to really cast properly so that um, we could cast people who could be let off the hook 
to bring their uniqueness to the role and to make the project greater than some of its parts. Much more interesting than just trying to rubber stamp and shoehorn people into uh, a very rigid view of how things should be. A much more collaborative, generous and embracing than the kind of dictatorial approach of, of some filmmakers. Now, you know, Kubrick is alleged to have been a very dictatorial filmmaker, a very dictatorial uh, director, and my goodness did he ever get results. But personally speaking, just the generosity um, that Paul showed me and the other actors, it just, it just um, w created a great deal of gratitude and a kind of professional love uh, for, for, for him. Uh, because if you think of how long somebody has worked as an actor and crappy commercials and this and that and the other, and you get to work with somebody of that calibre and they give you that kind of freedom, you know, there's a lot of love and gratitude there and you just wanted to do your best. So um, filmmakers, actors out there, you know, uh, show up, be authentic, um, do, do your very best, uh, be prepared to be in the, in the thrill and the fear and the exhilaration of being in the moment in character. Um, and as directors, you know, really cast carefully, um, cast people that you trust and then give them, give them the room to bring what they have to offer to the project and step back a little bit. OK, so next time I speak with you about uh, working with Richard, At with Lord Attenborough. And that's just a, a fun little anecdote. Um, and uh, and then we'll talk further about good vibrations. So here. In the blurb about um, uh, $50 Film School, uh, it does say that it's about your films, your creativity, your story. So I don't want this to be all about me. Yeah, really. I really don't want this to be all about me. I'd love to hear your stories, your ideas. So talk to me, Terry Tibbs. Talk to me about your film scripts, yeah? And we'll get a bit of dialogue going. I'd love to hear your stuff. And then as the project grows, you know, that gives us a sort of cross-fertilization and we'll start to build networks of uh, potential collaborators and be able to help each other accordingly. So again, thanks for listening. Uh, I'm off work today with a bit of an unpleasant tummy bug, um, but we're going to persevere nonetheless. And uh, God bless. I'll speak to you soon. Cheers. Bye.